Hey there, I'm Liz, and today I'm going to teach you how to make oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. And I think this is a really great recipe. I've made it a few times before. The cookies turn out really chewy, but also a little crispy. Um, so let's get started. So for this recipe, we only need 10 ingredients, one stick or half a cup of vegan butter. I like to use Earth Balance. Three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, two tablespoons of dark molasses, one cup of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, a half a cup of chopped walnuts, raw, one and a quarter cups of rolled oats, old-fashioned, and one and a half cups of chocolate chips. Make sure you buy a kind that's vegan. Semi-sweet is often vegan, but you should definitely check the packaging. So we're gonna start off with a half a cup of vegan butter softened. I like to use Earth Balance. Um, half a cup is also a stick of butter. If you buy the kind that comes in sticks. Um, and I soften this by leaving it out for a few hours near the oven. Uh, you can also soften it in the microwave or heat up some of it and make sure some of it stays solid because you don't want it to totally melt it. So to that we're gonna add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar and we're going to cream them together. And for this step, you can either use a KitchenAid, um, or you can also just use a spoon, just make sure your butter is soft enough. Um, something else is you could also use coconut oil, but I would recommend Earth Balance because I like the taste better. Um, and I think it makes the cookies a little more traditional, um, but if you, for whatever reason, want to use coconut oil, that will work as well. Just make sure um, it's in solid form, not liquid. Okay, so you want to mix it up until it's nice and fluffy. Put in a little elbow grease, unless you have an electric mixer, um, until it looks about like this. Okay, so next we're going to add in the vanilla. This is two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Definitely worth doubling it for this recipe. Um, I usually recommend in most recipes do it a little more than what it says. But let's mix that in to the cream, butter, and sugar real quick just till it's incorporated in there. Okay, great. So it looks like that. And next we're gonna add two tablespoons of blackstrap molasses. Today is sorghum, but um, something dark is what we really need. And a neat little trick is that if you coat whatever measuring spoon or cup you're using when you are measuring something as sticky as molasses or honey or maple syrup, um, it's good to coat it with a little bit of oil just so it falls right off instead of sticking to the spoon. So here's a tablespoon. And so now we're going to mix that around. Get the molasses incorporated. This sort of is replacing brown sugar, but I actually think that the molasses adds to the texture. But if you only had, say, agave or maple syrup, you could probably do the same thing with brown and just put brown sugar and white sugar and then mix them together. If that makes sense. So now it's going to be this color, this consistency. So after you mix the wet ingredients together, you can just put them aside and have a smaller bowl. It doesn't need to be that much bigger. It could be smaller than this if you really need it to. Um, and you're going to mix one cup of the all-purpose flour and a half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. I like to use kosher salt. You can also use sea salt or just uh, whatever salt you want. It's fancy Himalayan salt, whatever floats your boat. Then you're just going to whisk those together with one. Okay, so now you're going to take the wet ingredients again and you're going to gradually mix in the dry ingredients. Not even put a quarter of it, should be good. If you were using an electric mixer before, um, I recommend that you switch to a spoon now or put it on its lowest setting, especially for the KitchenAid, that should work on stir mode. So then, add some more, stir it up. Some 
hope that's more or less incorporated. That would be big. Piles at the bottom. We're going to add in our fun and lumpy ingredients. So this is one and a quarter cups of old fashioned oats. You just pour those right in. Stir it up. last three steps are definitely the most fun. I don't really know why, but if you're cooking with kids or someone who's new to baking, definitely let them do the basic at this point. Um, it is a little bit hard. You do have to put in some elbow grease again, but it's fun to sort of smell the chocolate chips and the dough and sort of see them finally becoming cookie dough, uh, ready to become cookies pretty soon. dry at the moment, but when we put them into balls, it should work well. Okay, I'm going to roll up my Cookie Monster sleeves. Make sure everything is back in the bowl. Um, I'm actually going to touch it with my hands. My hands are very clean, but make sure it's clean. And then I'm going to just make sure this does stick together. Now, you're going to want to grab a baking sheet. Usually I like to put some parchment paper on top to avoid sticking or burning, but I don't have any parchment paper. Um, at this point, you're pretty much done with the wooden spoon, so you're welcome to feed it to your friends, yourself, um, your pets, your kids, whatever. Um, it's lickable, and it's safe to eat since there's no eggs in this recipe. Okay, so now I'm going to form balls that are about um, this big. You might call it a heaping tablespoon. Um, and it's okay if things fall apart a little bit because they're going to click together when they bake. And it doesn't have to be a perfect ball because there's baking soda in here, so it's all going to bleed it out. So place those a few inches apart on a baking sheet and fit as many as you can. Now that you have your little balls formed and arranged on the cookie sheet, you're just going to stick them in an oven that has been preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and cook them for 10 to 12 minutes. Alright, so I let these cookies cool for about 10 to 15 minutes and now they are ready to try. Let's go with this one. Mm. This is delicious. It's legit. Um, it's very chocolatey and like oaty, which is awesome. I definitely recommend drinking this, sorry, eating this with a cup of almond milk, maybe some coffee, um, something to wash it down with just because it's so rich and chocolatey. Um, super awesome. I'm gonna give it two thumbs up, kitten approved. And thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave any comments you might have in the comments section. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.